there is, is still so much uh, news that is driving the markets when it comes to the COVID-19. Uh, vaccine rollouts, fast or slow, uh, the variants. How are the markets pricing this in? The markets are pricing this in in a very complex way. So uh, COVID impacts markets in, in many ways. Of course, it impacts the profit of the companies, but also it impacts actually uh, bond yields. And uh, we, we shouldn't remember that. And this is why late last, of what was it, about 12 months ago, when COVID really started to go around, we saw bond yields decline and actually lifted these stock markets up. So it's a really complex uh, kind of relationship. And with this new Delta variant, yeah, we need to figure out again how that impacts bonds and how that impacts profits again. So it's kind of an ongoing uh, process, a difficult process. So when you look at uh, you, you, these, these, uh, these cuts you made in South Korea and Malaysia, how much did the, the virus news factor into this? How much did it have to do with your view of the, 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 the companies, the, the economies involved and where those are heading? Uh, it's got everything to do with the companies. I, I, I really look at stock markets as a bunch of companies and not so much as what happens in the broader economy. I think there's, there are two very different things. Now, to be extremely frank, we've cut Korea to an underweight, but that's not really because of Korea. It's because of some of the other markets. There is um, uh, some other markets that look a little bit better. Korea, for example, is already well owned by a lot of foreign investors. Uh, most mutual funds are uh, quite considerably overweight, so I don't see that much additional buying. But we like other markets such as Taiwan. And therefore, um, it's, it's really that, uh, it's that we like some of the other markets slightly better than Korea. That's why how this, uh, how this, came, uh, how this came along. How can Chinese tech get cheap enough to entice you? So I think, uh, honestly, there's more to go. So um, Chinese tech, if we're talking in particular about internet uh, names, we've been cautious since uh, late last year. Um, uh, regulations came up, but I think there's uh, a lot of people focus on a couple of issues that have been really in the media, you'd say, um, uh, the regulations issues and stuff like that. But what we also see is that these companies are investing quite a lot. And I think they're going to start to compete in each other's backyard. And that means that I think these profitability in that sector might come under pressure as well. So I think in that particular sector, there's probably more to go. So we remain cautious on, uh, on China Internet. What about the impact of the Delta variant and the fact that we are starting to see really the, the differentials in growth come through from a, a lack of a fast vaccine rollout across parts of Asia? Yeah, so uh, the Delta variant is really making its rounds in, in, in large parts of Asia. Uh, Indonesia is really being impacted. You just mentioned Malaysia already. Of course, uh, India had it a couple of weeks ago. And this comes back to what I said in, in, in the earlier part. Um, it will impact the growth of companies, but some will be impacted more than others. And it will also impact bond yields and how governments are going to react to this. Um, so it's a really compact relationship and it's not easy to say, hey, COVID is there, therefore the stock market should go down. Actually, that might not be the case. We like, for example, a market such as Indonesia because it will benefit from, from lower bond yields quite considerably, although it will also be impacted negatively by the COVID that is going to go around in that, uh, in, that, uh, in that place. Okay, and the Philippines has gotten hit pretty hard by the COVID-19, yeah. and you have moved them to overweight. So what is it that you like there? Yeah. So to a large extent, the Philippines is, is very much a similar kind of story, I would say, as, as, as Indonesia. People are not really well positioned in those markets. And those markets benefit from lower bond yields. And what we've seen um, uh, globally, I would say, over the last couple of months is that we moved away from that reflation story. Um, uh, we've seen bond yields starting to come down. We've seen uh, banks and uh, basic materials, which are really a reflation kind of sectors. They benefit from the reflation story, starting to underperform. So uh, the market is moving the narrative, and it's moving the narrative to kind of uh, maybe reflation is not going to be as strong as what we anticipated. And the markets that benefit from that are the Philippines and Indonesia. So we like those markets, although we have to acknowledge, of course, that some of the COVID issues there are a risk to, um, to growth as well. But then you have to answer the question, yeah, how, much, how much does it impact the banks and the individual companies there, or food companies or telecom companies? And maybe, maybe it's not as much as, um, as, as, as we sometimes believe it is. And therefore, we think there's an opportunity in those markets.